So let's talk about lifetime value of a client. Let's talk about how we retain clients longer. And let's talk about how we can utilize specific sales strategies to get you, the logistics sales reps, ahead and 10 rungs above where you are now. Welcome to the HPLS podcast. Live, relevant, and high performance information, conversations, and education weekly. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another session of Sales Chatter. I have got an interesting guest with me today. I'm just finished his book, um, and I'm telling you right now. This is going to be such a cool conversation because the strategies and ideas in Carl's book are, um, you know what, I'm going to say they're a class up because it's a new way of thinking. It's it's a new vitality, but also it's got old school baseline kind of frameworks and structure. So Carl, thank you so much for being here, my friend. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm going to pull up your, your PDF of your book that you gave me right now because um, I'm telling you, I, I, first thing I want to know, why iceberg selling i was very intrigued by the book title yeah that's a great question you know i've got kind of two answers there one i i've been doing sales consultancy sales coaching for a really really long time and i started to kind of go through um presentations i've done in the past and sure enough there were this theme of icebergs well i also have a bunch of clients in canada and uh this summer i decided to go up to canada. <laughs> you're gonna okay? hit the igloo so, thing aren't you <laughs> <laughs> no, but Churchill, Churchill has all the polar bears, okay? Yeah. It's in the very northern part of Manitoba. And so I've got this awesome client in Manitoba, worked with them for four years. And uh, they invited me to come up and run a workshop. And I took my youngest son, who's a sophomore in high school. And I was like, after the workshop, because I think you're going to learn while I'm there, let's go north too. So we started to plan this. And I was at the same time, that was maybe like January, we went in the summertime. So I was like processing, you know, what is the book? What is it all about? And I kept just this iceberg theme of like only 10% of the surface kept showing up and how do we find the 90% below? And then I find myself going to, to see polar bears and beluga whales. I was like, okay, this is a sign. Um, I'm going to go with iceberg. <laughs> plus, plus here's the thing. Like I'm a sales guy and I want easy. I want an easy button. I want to be able to remember stuff. And I was like, man, if I could let people walk away with one thing, their customers are an iceberg until you see below the surface, you can't, you can't be optimal. So Iceberg selling. Mm, I love that. I love that. And you know, okay, so let's let, let's play in the sandbox here a little bit more because I, I think this strategy is one of the best strategies in sales, especially. So I don't know how much you know about logistics, but in our market right now, um, we're, we're in what's called a shipper's market. So it's it's you know, landing new clients, um, finding the value in clients, even getting business from clients is on the lower end of what we've seen in many years. Obviously, COVID put a huge kind of roller coaster ride into logistics, right? So let's talk about how we start exploring that 90% that's not open to the surface or showing on the surface. And how, so how would you go about doing that? Um, let's break it down kind of step by step. Yeah, you know, the first thing that just showed up for me while you were saying that is this, this phrase you, you said at the beginning, kind of old school meets new school today. And I think old school, we were like, hey man, you're in sales, you can't take anything personal. And I, I wanna flip that around and say, yeah. you absolutely need to. Like if, if, if your customer, your client is acting odd, there's they're terse, short emails. If there's something where you're just like, something doesn't feel right, guess what? It might be you, it might be how you're showing up. I'm not saying it is every time, mm. but like, let's look inside and see what's going on. What is my role in these things? So I think kind of out of the gate, even though I'm going to talk about exploring that iceberg is if you're kind of thinking about a client customer you're dealing with right now or a lead and they're ghosting you and things aren't happening, but you had a really great out of the gate conversation. That's probably some clues that, hey, maybe I need to take these clues personally. and There's something going on. So that's kind of the first thing I would set the stage with is like you are in control of how you show up how you want to be with that person. And if they're not responding in a way that makes sense, like you're co-creating, you're working together. Yeah, it could be a lot of other things, but good chances you don't know what's really going on in that person's life or in their company. And until you do, you're going to keep misfiring. You're going to keep missing, missing, missing. So with that, you know, I'm happy to kind of share that. some of the things, but yeah. maybe there's something that's for you too. 
You want me to well, play you along? Know, when you, when you, you yeah, 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 yeah. So let's 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 continue because when you said that, um, the first thing to me was I'm constantly telling people like you got to understand your clients' goals. If you totally. have no idea where they're going, any road will get you there. And it's <laughs> I love that. It, it, yeah, it, it's kind of like you, you know, and and I watch salespeople all the time. Oh well, we could do this, this, and this, and the clients, but I zero i have zero interest in that you know and it's it's like if you don't understand the goal and, and here's what i what i my whole perspective on it if you don't understand the objective right the mission of the, your client you're never going to make the right decision it's kind of like throwing shooting at things in the dark you have no idea if you hit it until you hear the sign but if you hit one out of every 50 that's a really bad uh percentage, I guess I'll use the word percentage. Um, so how would you expect to really help your customer? Because in the end, we can throw this word value around, but what is value? Like it's, it's all about increasing status, right? Like everything we do is about status and everything your customer does is about status. It's increasing their status, helping them hit their goals, helping your cu customer with their image, credibility, and brand. And that's where my mind always goes. And when you said that, I was like, yeah, bingo. It always goes there, there because- we need to understand where they're going in order to help. Like, I mean, here's the thing. Can we even help them get there? Right? Like sometimes, no, sometimes they're just right. not part of our ideal client profile and we can't help them. And I would say, you know, I'll answer that or comment on that. And then I'll, I'll, or I'll rewind a little bit, but yeah. look, you're a salesperson. You create value. You got to create value for yourself too. And you only have so much time, so much energy, right? And, and I need feedback. I need momentum to create momentum and I need positive feedback to feed that momentum. And if I'm talking and spending all my time with this person and they're reflecting back, not a good fit, not a good fit, not a good fit. Well, it's not of service to me either. I'm going to yeah. start to get drained and guess what? The next call I'm on, I might not show up top of my game. And that's not fair to that client. It's not fair to me as the salesperson, not for, fair for whatever organization I'm working for. So, you know, the, 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 the big question I love to ask, I'll go into organizations or I'll be like doing a keynote and I'll work in a group and I'll just say, hey, I want you to think of the last time you met with your sales manager and let's say they asked you some questions like, hey, where is this in the funnel? How do you think it's going to close? But what if instead of that, they asked you, hey, tell me about Dan's world. Could you answer that question? And if you're sitting there going, I don't know what the hell you mean, Carl, then my guess is you're living above that surface. And yeah, maybe you know a couple things if we think about that iceberg that's going on underneath. But until I can, I can tell, answer that question about, do I get your world? Then I'm, my odds, my percentage is going to be low because I'm, I'm not seeing everything. And that's mm -hmm. the real trick. Like you got to kind of change your mindset to, it's okay to be a guide. And if yes. you're going to be a guide as a salesperson, you got to learn where people want to go and what's up in their life so that you can guide them. And so for me, you know, what you're, what you're saying really resonates. It's about understanding, going deeper and guiding. Mm -hmm. I love that. I often say it's like, if you don't understand their goal, it's like trying to get a big wheel up Mount Everest, right? <laughs> um, you, you know, big wheels barely went up hills when we were kids in the summertime, Never mind on ice and snow, right? You're not even getting the base camp, like you're getting nowhere. And exactly. it's, it, it's, I love that idea of the iceberg though. I just can't get that visual out of my head now. I love it. I love it. Well, let me answer. So answer rewind for us then. How do we do this? How do we do this? You want to know how we do this? Okay, here we go. I want you to imagine, you know, you have a, an appointment. It's a first call. Now, it can be applied to future calls, but let's just kind of make this really simple. Yeah. You have a first call, new client. They, they want to talk to you. So, like, it's not prospect, prospect. It's like, we've got somebody that's ready to learn. So, the first mm -hmm. thing I want you to do is, like, do the research, right? The, the story I love to tell is my dad turned 80, and I wanted to plan a surprise birthday party for him. Well, I didn't need to be a genius to know his friends are over 80, and they're not going to drive at night. And I better not get a restaurant that's like dark with narrow stairs and loud music. Like that would be a disaster. So yeah. those are the things I already knew that were the table stakes, right? So before you even get on that call, separate yourself from the competition. Like, what do you already know? What can you find? You know, with social media and everything that's out there, I can get a pretty good feeling of who this person is before I even get on the call. So do the, do the work, do the research. Mm -hmm. And what I love about that is it starts to prime your brain and you get excited and you might even find clues on your next customer because you're like, oh, my gosh, this guy used to work with this guy. And this guy, you know, was a great client yeah. for five years. Like you're, you're, you're increasing your advantage to win. The second is when, when you do get on that call. And, and like you said, when you 
when you introduced me, some of these things we know, but I feel like we've forgotten or, or we're so focused on bottom of the funnel that we forget to ha- how to run a really yes. great meeting. And so for me, it's yes. like set yourself up for success. Hey, Dan, over the next 30 minutes, do we still have 30 minutes? This is what I'd like to do. I'd like to learn a little bit more about you, yes. uh, you know, what your world's like, um, what success in your world looks like, why you might want to be talking to me. And then let me share a little bit about us. And then after that, let's do a check in. And if I still think this is a good fit, let's keep going. If not, I'm going to do my best to refer you to somebody else. I'm going to do my best to continue to provide value for you, even if it's not me. But if it is, let's start to talk a little bit more about how we might be able to work together. And I call that co-creation, right? Like, how do we how do we start talking about like ideas? Because if you own an idea and I own the idea, we own it together. That has a lot more probability of happening than I'm just just like this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. You know, like anytime you try to enroll somebody in your idea, if they're not part of it, it's a lot steeper hill to climb, right? Yes. And so after yeah. that, I talk about building rapport, which to me is you got to listen. I hear this all the time. You know, are the best salespeople extroverts? Yeah, sometimes. But I got to tell you, some of the best consultants I work with are super introverts. They're so good at listening. They're so good at staying present and they don't feel like they have to talk, but they develop this amazing rapport with their customers because they're listening and learning and asking questions. And if we can just slow ourselves down, Mm. build some rapport. And I I say, ask the question they want, you want them to ask you, Hey, how'd you get in this business? They're probably going to ask you the same question. And the more you share, the more they start to share, Hey, now we're building rapport. It's like a ping pong match, right? Where balls going back and forth. And the Mm. more we do back and forth, the more we have connection and as salespeople, I think we love connection. The, the last two yeah, we, so we definitely I, do. is um, test for success. Hey, did I hear you right? Do you like this idea? What would you change? Right. And, and even even if it was as silly as this is, I mean, we're talking old school. You know, if I had a magic wand, what would that solution look like, Dan? And you would tell me and I can mm-hmm. tell you if it's a fit. Right. But we're running a good meeting. We're spending time. We're telling people where we're going to take them. And then the last one is what we all hate to do, no matter how good we are, is get clear on that next step. Dan, can we get a calendar out? Mm-hmm. Let's meet on Thursday, even if it's a check-in call. And here's the craziest thing. Even if I'm talking like Fortune 500 executives, like I'm talking to high-level people, the more I manage them, the more they're glad I'm doing it because I'm taking things yep. off their plate. And that's of being a mm-hmm. service, and that's how you create value. You don't just go, oh, I don't want to ruin my rapport by asking them when we're going to meet. Throw that head trash away. Be, be confident that they want to talk with you. So that's kind of my, yeah. I'm going to say an iceberg in a nutshell, but those are the five things, right? Like just, just get in there and be present and, and guide people to the end. And I got to tell you, possibilities and really great things happen. It is. And you know what? I, I love that you said that I, I've created a, if I do this, will you do that method? So if I get you this by X time, will you get it back to me by X time? Yeah. Keeps, keeps you stepping too. forward in your sales process. And then there's also the, the flip side of that is I believe when we connect with somebody, so I, I'm, I love email over phone calls. And I've had so many people say, well, Dan, are you you're like, you're afraid to cold con? I said, no, it's just, when has a call ever caught you at a great time? Never. Right. I get emails back from CEOs and presidents at eight, nine o'clock at night. And I answer them, right? So it's being able to answer if it's something that interests me on my own time. And here's one thing I've found. If you're not organized with your calendar, you lose credibility with the person you're speaking to. Because like you said, CEOs, CFOs, CTOs, sales managers, vice presidents of logistics, they got a lot going on in their day. And you need to block time out for that next conversation or for a conversation or else, again, you're shooting in the dark. And you could have a great conversation today And you hang up the phone and there's no next process, next step. And then three weeks later, you still can't get a hold of the person because they're busy. Right. You know, and, and I I love that you said that. I love it. We're, we're on so on the same plane, brother. (laughs) Well, two things to play off of that is professionals want to buy from other professionals. People that play good ball want to play with other people that play good ball, you know, and and that's Mm -hmm. the bottom line. If you're scratching your head going, do I play good ball? If you're asking that question, then you probably don't play as good a ball as you want to. If you play good ball, you, you run meetings, you're, you're tight, you're organized, you're driven, you have an ownership mentality, a drivership mentality, you're getting in action all the time. And you're not just thinking about the step in front of you, but the next five or 10. 
or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I yeah. think, like you said, we are, we're cut from the same cloth here and, and sales isn't a mystery. It's really about no. how can I create value, connect with this person, demonstrate that I get them, provide a solution that makes their life better, and then move it forward and be the guide, be that engine that moves it forward because we're all busy. You know, and not only are we competing against all of our competitors, but we're competing against Little League, right? Uh, the person's spouse, you know, their parents, the drive home. Like, so if we can't get ahead of all that and lock down that meeting and get a clear next step, man, yeah, you're going to feel like you're ghosted and showing up doing the check-in. And nobody, nobody likes that. Every salesperson in the world, I'm just checking in. Like, come on, <laughs> like, create value. And don't worry about getting yeah. ghosted anymore. You do this, you're never going to get ghosted yeah. again. Let me ask you this, because you just mentioned something right there that actually just went aha in my head. We're up against Little League. We're up against date night with their husband, wife, or spouse. We're up against all these other things. Do you see a major shift since COVID for people mm -hmm. that are now like, okay, no, no, no. I'm not here till nine o'clock at night anymore. I'm going home to see my fan. You know what I mean? Like that, I, I'm seeing a huge shift. And I'm wondering if in your world, you're seeing the same thing. Yeah, I, I was, um, it was interesting. I was on a podcast with a host from Hong Kong earlier this week. And she goes, oh my God, I'm so glad to have an American. And I was like, you're an American living in Hong Kong. What's going on? She goes, nobody will talk to me after seven o'clock. So I did my podcast with her at seven or eight o'clock at night. And it was like 10 in the morning. And we had this similar conversation about like, there are stronger boundaries for a lot of people, which I think is healthy. Yes. But I think on the opposite yes. side, um, you know, look, if you're an entrepreneur, you're a salesperson, you got to hustle straight up all the time. The joke I always have, I get it from hip hop is right. Like money never sleeps. Right. So like, <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> isn't that 50 it, cent? Isn't that 50 cent? Yeah. I think that's 50. Yeah. If, if you want to be successful, you, you got to out compete. And it's no different than if you want to be a star quarterback. Right. You're not going, oh, five o'clock. I'm done. I'm, I'm heading, I'm heading home. Right. You're doing summer camps. You're working at night. You got a gym at home. You got a trainer. If you want to play great yeah. ball, it's no different. And so it's a yes. And like, I think, I think there's a lot of people that have gotten a lot better about boundaries. I think that's super healthy, especially in sales, yes. right? Like we need a balance. Like if we only have one strong muscle and the rest is fatigued, we're going to burn out and that doesn't help anybody. Yeah. But the opposite is mm -hmm. you got to be careful. It doesn't go too far. And you're, you're losing out to your competitors. You're, you're losing against yourself back to that sports team because you're not given that extra effort when you need to. Not all the time, but you know, like, yes. so I, yeah. I would, I would definitely be in the camp that the world's different and there's some people that are out there really hustling. And there's some others that I think might need to put it in a higher gear. Um, and there's some others yeah. that I think have decided balance is really important. And I, I commend that. Yeah. And I mean, it's like Jeb Blunt says, right? We have the golden hours that we can really sell, which is why I love email because the golden hours don't apply. I'll get people will get back to me at all hours oh, of the right. evening and I can get back to them. But there's also, um, you know, if we're using the sports analogy and you, you take like an NFL quarterback, right? They're not just extremely talented and played their arse off for their whole life to get where they are for football. They have to understand contract negotiation, health and wellness, sleep, like all these other criteria. And as a salesperson, I think, well, I'd love your opinion on this. I think we as salespeople owe it to our customers to be at the top of our game, understand what's, understand what's happening in our industry, even project what's going to happen in the future to the best of our abilities. Because if we don't, I think we're being a, as a disservice to the people that are in our community. What do you think about that? I totally agree. I mean, and, and the reason I agree is there, there's been a, a shift, right, for the last 30 years where the buyer, the consumer can find data more and more and more and more, right? I, yeah. If I wanted to evaluate buying a new car, I can see a gazillion reviews. I can do a virtual tour. I can do everything. At some point you go, why do I need the salesperson? Yes. And I would say you always need the salesperson. But if that salesperson doesn't realize the, the, the part of the value equation they provide, which is that human interaction, that human brain, that understanding of that person's world and scenario, and then the confidence of saying yes, no, maybe, or yes, with these conditions, like we're going to modify the solution, then you are not providing a service because they can get all that other information somewhere else. What they can't get is that one-to-one, -one, hey, if you were me, what type of decision would you make and why? Mm. Right? They're still outsourcing some of that decision to us. And if we're not prepared, they're going to go find somebody that is, 
and and yes. you could have the better product, but the other person has like just better social skills. They're more engaged. They're they're, they're listening stronger. And so I, if you're not on top of your game and understand the world you're in, you're also creating a disadvantage for you, but also for the company. And to your point, I do think it's kind of of a disservice because if we're showing up to create value and help people, you got to be ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I got my Ford Fusion Energy, um, it was my first electric car, right? And I got it in 2017. And I remember for months, Carl, I researched this. Like I mm -hmm. kept a spreadsheet of, I had a charger RT and like how much fuel I was going to save and the average kilometers per hundred miles and, and all this. And I went through everything and I remember, and I remember the day going to the dealership and I sat down with the salesperson and I'm like, and I'm a geek, right? When it comes to like data, I'm a, a full on geek and, and I got no issue saying it. And I go in and I'm verbal, like diarrhea on this guy. And he's looking at me and I can see like my salesman's eyes are glazing over. Right. And I'm, I'm like, what do you, do you think? And he goes, dude, you know, 10 times more about this car than I do. And I went, really? And I said, but you're selling it. He goes, yeah. He goes like, I'm actually at a loss for words right now. He goes, I don't even know what to say. Like you, you sold me the car and I was just <laughs> talking about it. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, and I remember driving home and going, wow, like, you're selling this. And, and I remember Bob Proctor telling me, oh gosh, two decades ago, I remember sitting with him at a, a hotel in Toronto. And he says, Dan, here's the thing. When you love what you do, just talking about it becomes a sale. And I'm sitting there thinking, my gosh, like, how is it that a consumer myself could know more about information about a vehicle that somebody sells. And one of the examples he gave me was like, you know, you walk into a car dealership and somebody says, this Cadillac is the best of the best. And you go, what do you drive? He goes, oh, I got a Chevrolet. You, right. Well, how do you know it's the best of the best? And this is one thing I, and, and to get a little comical with everyone here for a minute. Um, I love it when I get somebody that calls me about windows. And says like, we got the best windows in the planet. I go, oh yeah, is your house with them? He goes, no, no, I live in an apartment. I'm like, well, how do you know they're the best windows then? Exactly. It, it always goes silent. Eh? And I'm like, there's nothing on the script for that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I just, I keep thinking about if, if that guy that was selling you that car, you know, asked you some iceberg questions like, hey, why'd you do so much research? And, you know, what is it that you wish that I could have helped you with? Even if he said, I don't know, but guess what, Dan, I'm going to take, I'm going to, if you want to buy it tonight, I'll do everything I can to find it. But if you want to buy it tomorrow, give me, give me, you know, 24 hours. I'm going to call the factory. I'm going to do whatever. And I'm going to get you that answer because I see you're passionate and I love your passion. Right. But until he unpacked all those reasons, yeah, he's probably just like, uh, 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 you know, and, yeah. and so I think that's one of the secrets here with iceberg selling too, is even if you don't know everything, you can still be an expert at asking questions. Yes. You can still be an expert at being curious. Right. And if you don't know how to do that, go go to a kindergarten class and bring in something they've never seen and let those kids ask you why 10 times and how it works. Right. Like those kids are so curious and, and it's like, OK, have fun with it. Like, Dan, that's crazy that, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Where'd you learn it? Why would you learn it? You know, like, are you part of a cult? You know, like, have some fun with it. <laughs> the like, electric vehicle yeah, cult. <laughs> yeah, you're part of the electric vehicle cult. I had five other guys in here the other day. When's your, you know, when's your clubhouse yeah. meeting? But like, but. But I think that that's the point. Like if we keep seeing ourselves as a guide, even if we don't have the thing, the knowledge, we have the ability to create a bridge to get you that knowledge. And that's again, where that. I'm investing time in you and solving your problem. And that's rapport, that's trust, that's relationship. And that's also that momentum that allows us to be really effective salespeople. And it's fun, right? I don't know about you, but when I sell and I can solve someone's problem and I can find what's really going on and we're laughing and at, all of a sudden we're friends. That's the best day. Yes. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, there, there's also, you know, I, I look at like, I, I think sales is the best career on earth. I, I, I believe it wholeheartedly. I look at logistics and I'm a, I'm a little bit um, biased when it comes to logistics to be totally transparent. Um, 
because it's the only industry I've ever been in for close to 30 years. And, but I, I sit here and I do a 360 in my office and everything's touched a truck. And, you know, one thing that, um, I love to do when I sell is I put myself in the end user's position. So I'll give you a perfect example. Um, when I used to move a lot of quartz and granite, every move I visualized the, the couple or the individual getting that kitchen that they've saved up five years to get. And those quartz countertops coming in pristine condition. And that's the way I ship the freight. Right. I mean, there was, there was many layers beyond what I did, right. It'd get to the, it'd get to the actual company from the company. Then it would go and it would be, get switched over to, um, you know, a cutter and then they would polish and then like, it'd have to be shipped to the location, then installed. Like there's all these different levels. But to me, I was there for that. Every single piece of auto, when I dealt a lot with Magna and I had a lot of automotive parts, it was like, I would envision that person buying their first car for the first, like their first ever brand new car and the look on their face. And to me, that's what, as, as a salesperson, I, I think that's when you're all in, right? I mean, that's the reason I wrote it here because I, I think mm -hmm. it, it's this all in mentality of, you know, and this kind of, I love the way conversations go. This goes right back to the beginning. You should take it personally. When I hang up the phone with somebody and they're like, no, not interested. I'm like, what did I do wrong? How do they, how did I not get my point across? And, and I start analyzing it and I say, okay, well, hold on. Maybe, okay. Maybe they weren't part of my ideal client profile. I should probably have a conversation with them again. And I don't know how many times I've hung up and then picked it right back up. Like, okay, hold on. We got to have another conversation here because I don't think you got me or I, maybe I said it wrong or something. And that's the, the level of passion that I have when it comes to helping sales reps generate over a million dollars GP, when it comes to everything I do in sales, when I'm selling freight, when I'm doing, even when I'm speaking with you on this podcast, like it, it's the, we want to dig into that iceberg and pull that value out, which you just did. I love that story. I love that mindset for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Talking about powerful, right? I, I, one of the things I, I start the book with is, what are you playing for? You know, why did you yeah. get into sales? Because I'm with you. Sales is so powerful. Like we make dreams happen. We put presents under the Christmas tree. We pay for college. Like we, we and, and we make payroll for the company, you know? And so I, I just, I love getting connected with what's your passion. Because for you, it's like truly seeing the satisfaction of the end step, of whatever you're selling. You know, for somebody else, it might just be like, I love it when... I get a Christmas card from somebody, or I love it when I get an email or a text or something on social media. And they're, now we're Facebook friends, like whatever it is, find that and use that as your fuel to kind of keep you going. Cause mm -hmm. you know, not every day is going to be pleasant when you're out there putting yourself yes. out like all the time. You got to find that, that battery that fills you up. Maybe it's your EV battery. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Plug it in every night, my friend. Plug it in. Every well, That's I'll tell you, um, when I read that in the book at the beginning, it hooked me because Good. that's where my mindset is, right? I've, I've always told sales reps, you got to enter the conversation where your prospect is. So what's that conversation that's typically going on in their mind? And can you enter it at that point? And that's where good marketing comes in, right? That's where understanding your market comes in and all that. So um, for you starting the book like that, I mean, it, you had me, you know, as what was, uh, you had me at hello or whatever. I forget the movie, but yeah, uh, yeah. It, it was like, instant i was like ah oh, here we go i know i'm gonna love this book um so yeah, share with everybody um you have your you, you gave everybody the five steps if you can just review those five steps quickly um and then share with them where they can get your book how people can get a hold of you and kind of uh, give us a little bit more about the services you offer because i, I want to make sure Perfect. we share this because if you're in sales right now and you're listening to this whether it be live whether it be on youtube whether it be on the podcast whatever platform you're watching and listening on. I mean, I'm telling you right now, get iceberg selling. It is a great, and I mean, it's not long, right? The PDF is 64 pages. So I don't know how many pages it came in an actual like book, but it's not a big read, but it's so dynamic for all of you watching and listening that it's just, it's like, aha, after moment, aha moment, aha moment, aha moment. And then I just found towards the end of the book, everything just went vertical. So Carl, thank you for writing it for starters. And, and if you can share those details with people. Wow. I appreciate it. that was powerful. Like that oh, was the okay. intent though. Like 
I was like, I yeah. want to write a book by a salesperson for salespeople in a way yeah, that it keeps it. us, keeps our attention. It's fun. It's fast. You know, the audio book's two and a half hours. The paper book's 111 pages. Um, it's fast. But it, it, I, even if you read two pages at a time, you're going to get something. And so, you know, to kind of revisit some stuff about the book, um, it has four mindsets. We didn't cover those terribly, but some of it is like lifetime value. How are you of service? What does that even mean? Right. How do I have an ownership mindset? OK, that means you can author your own story. It's up to you. And if you get curious about that, then drivership is like, hey, I don't want to be the passenger in my career. I want to be the driver. So let's play around with that, what that looks like. And then in, in this podcast, what we talked about were the five steps of iceberg selling, which is like, do the research, like come prepare. And it doesn't mean an hour. It could be five minutes. But for me, doing the research is like fun. I'm like, What can I find? I'm Sherlock Holmes. What can I find ahead of this call that sets me apart and shows that I did the, you know, I'm a pro. I showed up. I did the work. Um, yep. Second, set yep. yourself up for success. Let people know where they want to go. Uh, where you're going to take them. Uh, when you do that, there's no smoke and mirrors. They're, they know, they know there's not going to be a gotcha later. And they're a lot more enrolled and wanting to listen to you. Uh, build rapport, really listen, ask open-ended questions, stay curious. And if you're worried how to start, be authentic, share something about yourself, test for success, repeat back. Did I get you? And then start to co-create. Hey, based on what you said, it could look like this. It could look like, it could look like that. Because again, if we start to see more of the iceberg, our off the shelf solution might not fit. We might need to modify it a little bit mm. and being able to do that creates advantage. Last one, always have a next step. Book is Iceberg Selling. URL is icebergselling.com. You can get it on Amazon, Audible. Um, my business is improving sales performance. We, we come in and help build high performing and I'm going to say highly functional teams. We're based here in Colorado, but I've got clients all over the country. And uh, yeah, I would just invite you to explore if you want to reach out to me either site there's all my contact information if you send me an invite on linkedin i'll definitely accept it and say hi and i love talking about all this stuff so if you're curious reach out but i really appreciate this time awesome thank you so much for carl for being here again for all of you watching and listening um we don't usually make hard suggestions but after reading this book it's a hard suggestion like this has got to be part of your sales repertoire if you're going to read a book in 2024 make this the book because i think also, the way you structured the book, and, and I have to give you props for this because, you know, I've, I, I, you know, I'm a good book a week, book every two weeks kind of guy. And I find a, there's a lot of fluff in books just because I, I don't even know if it's, you know, more pages means there's better quality in it or whatever. But when, when I was reading Iceberg Selling, it's like, you're, you're right. You can read two pages at a time and really get something. And it reminds me a lot, I don't know if you've ever read it, but it reminds me of a lot of When They Say No by Andrew Waltz and Richard Fenton. Um, every two pages, you get something. Like, and, and literally, it was, it was like, bang, okay, there's a tool, there's a tactic, bang, there's a strategy, bang, there's an idea, bang, there's an aha. And it was so, yeah, again, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse thank here. No horses were hurt so in the making of this podcast, but you're welcome, my friend. You're welcome. But thank you so much for being here, Carl. And to all of you watching and listening, go out there and make every call educational and crush your sales. We'll see you next time. Welcome to the HPLS podcast. Live, relevant, and high performance information, conversations, and education weekly.